Well, church, today's Friday. It's not just any TGIF, any thank goodness it's Friday as we anticipate any ordinary weekend, but Good Friday. Today we reflect on God's gracious provision of salvation at Calvary for you and for me. Today we're experiencing some, dis some discomfort, aren't we? Confinement, isolation, restrictions, quarantines, things that bug us and prompt in us a strong desire for things to quickly return to normal. And yet none of those things we experience today comes anywhere close to the agony, to the rejection experienced by our Savior as He went to the cross to act in our place as the only acceptable, permanent sacrifice for sin. You think about the day that Christ was crucified, an awful day. The previous day had been spent with teaching ministry in Jerusalem. There was mental exhaustion. The previous evening in his teaching ministry, the disciples at the Last Supper, four chapters of Scripture that encapsulate that conversation. Emotional exhaustion experienced as he petitioned the Father there in the garden to the point of sweating great drops of blood. Physical exhaustion after a long day as he's arrested and put on an all-night trial. Excruciating pain and scourging the beating that he experienced Friday morning. And then the agony of six hours on the cross are 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. You think of the humiliation that Jesus suffered. We're reminded that in John's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 28 and 29, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the Scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. And a vessel of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. The reminder in that one simple statement, I thirst, of the humiliation of Jesus, the eternal God, come in human flesh, the one who, if it were not for our sin, would never have experienced that human need for refreshment, would never have experienced human pain. But the humility of our Savior, the humiliation of our Savior, Philippians 2, to leave the throne room of heaven, one who was equal with God, to come and take on the form of sinful man so that our salvation could be provided. Two statements of Christ today. Not only I thirst, but there in verse 30 as well. When Jesus received the sour wine, He said, It is finished. And bowing His head, he gave up his spirit. This was a statement of great exuberance from the Savior. It says in one of the other Gospels that he declared this with a loud voice. It's a cry of victory as he proclaims, It is finished. That clear reference to the work that the Father had sent him to accomplish here on the earth was now complete. The work of providing redemption for the sins of mankind so that we could be offered the gracious provision of reconciliation with God Himself. To think of three passages today. Ephesians chapter 2, You He made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, He made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved. This declaration of victory pronounced by Jesus. I think of 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 20 through 25. 1 Peter 2, verse 20. What credit is it when you're beaten for your faults that you take it patiently? But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. For to this you were called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in His steps who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls." It reminds me briefly here of Isaiah 53. 
and that passage that looked ahead to the death of our Savior in verses 4 and 5. Surely He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed Him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon Him, and by His stripes we are healed. What a glorious love shown for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Victory over death, victory over sin, victory over the grave, promise of life available solely through the person and work of Jesus Christ for you and for me.